Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna continue where we left off in the last one, and that's working on the Vectra and getting the fuel tank refitted. These are two new pipes. Um, that's the little one, which looks exactly right to me. It goes in there to replace that one. And that's the bigger one, which again, looks like it's gonna fit perfectly. Got some nice new stainless steel um, Jubilee clips here. One for each end of the big one, and one for each end of the little one. So I'll give that a clean up, get these pipes out of this rubber thing, thread it all back in, and uh, we can start putting the tank bank back in. So there we have all the new pipes fitted, or both the new pipes. Um, new Jubilee clips, I've got stainless steel ones there, hopefully they'll last a lifetime of the car. Um, bit of a fiddle to get these pipes threaded through here, I ended up pulling this sleeve right off. Um, and then I use some washing up liquid or dishwashing soap, whatever you call it in your part of the world, um, and use that for lubrication on the pipes. Just pour a bit down in this sleeve, and then uh, manage to thread them all through. I took a photograph of this before I took it all apart, just to make sure I've got everything lined up right and in the right order. So this pipe at the top, this is the one that comes from connection on the tank there, and this other vent pipe here um, is the one that was at the bottom, so that's at the bottom as well. Recently pointing in pretty much the same angle. So it's time to try and get the tank back in the car. Um, just a little bit concerned as to where, where is it, that clip, where that should be. Um, probably on the side of the tank somewhere, maybe around the back here. But um, we'll work that out when we get everything back in. I think it's gonna be a bit of a pain to lift this back in, because obviously it just sort of fell out. Um, but you've got to be a little bit more precise getting it back in. Um, so yeah, I'll give that a go, and uh, I'll show you the proceedings in due course. So I've got the tank back in position under the car, um, ready to lift up in the place. I was just gonna say I'm gonna decided, I've decided I'm gonna um, replace the fuel filter, which is there with new one which is there um, while I've got it off the car because it's easier to get to those connectors and things there um, get things undone so that's the plan right so that's the fuel tank back in um, connected all the petrol pipes back up and the breather pipes back up there um, so what we've got to do now is we've got that vent pipe there has got to be clip to the, uh, the plastic pipe. Obviously the flexible hoses have got to be connected back on. And we've got to connect the pipes back up in here. So that one's fed through, fed through that hole. Just got to clip it back into the uh, plastic bit there. And obviously that one there has got to be clipped up onto the outside of here. So let's crack on with that. New connections up there. Then pipe is all clipped in its place. Um, we can't really see back there, but wheel arch, wheel arch line is back in and the wheel is back on. So the only thing left to do now is put the exhaust on. Um, I'm just thinking actually I might just turn it on first and see if we've got any leaks. I'm just looking at that down there, I think that's just water dripping out of um, one of the drain plugs. Um, but we'll check that, don't think it's fuel. Um, we'll just flick the engine on, we'll just flick the ignition on so the, water, the uh, fuel pump primes up, primes the system, brings out the pressure and um, we'll see if we've got any leaks. <clears throat> so good news is, um, can't see any fuel leaks at all under there. It's all clear around the filter. That is water dripping out of there. Um, I think it's getting in through the 
boot seals because these hatchback vectors are notorious for the uh, seals around the boot lid going um so i think that's probably where that's getting in we need to investigate that because it's quite a long way down the front of the car um just having a check in here so everything's connected up back in there doesn't appear to be any leaks in there um obviously we won't be able to tell a hundred percent um until we've got the car started and i can't do that until the exhaust system's fitted so um i think that's the next job to get on with so as you can see there's the exhaust system all back on it's all fitted all the way back all the way down all the little hangers are on with their little clips um if we go around here oh, get down under here we should be able to see so back up there, as you might be able to see, excuse the camera work while I wriggle under, there's two new stainless steel bolts in that fit in there. You can see one sticking out and one out the other side. Managed to find them kicking around in the garage, so they'll do for now. I'm sure it's not going to leak out of there. Um, so yeah, like I said, that's all back on, exhaust lights back on. We've already checked for leaks and everything um, with the car not running. Um, also gone and got a couple of gallons of uh, fresh petrol because the stuff that was in there had been sitting in there for a year and most of it had leaked out um so i've put a couple of gallons of fresh petrol in so let's see if we can get the car to start right so oh it's not stretching the window i can't open the door yeah it's out of gear ignition on fire it up see what happens is running like a dream I'm running a lot better now that it's got fresh fuel in it yeah, just have a look under here So something's been an advisory um, on the MOT ever since I've had this car on and off is play in the steering arm joints on the inside. So these are the outside, these are what we call your track rod ends. Um, these have been replaced before, um, so I know there's no play in those, but what they're saying is there's play on the inner joints of this. Now if we look up there, if you see the bellows up underneath there, just here um, underneath there at that end is a uh, connection a ball joint that goes into the steering rack itself and that needs to be unscrewed from there and this arm will replace now I'd sort of read online that you could do that in the car but I'll do that with the so I'd read online that you can do that um, with the steering rack in the car however this is the chassis rail or the subframe and oh, I can't for the life of me see how right up there somewhere I don't know if you can see that is the other end of those bellows so we're looking right up here somewhere you can just see the bellows this here oh it's very difficult to get on to show you but where are we there so this here is the end of your, of the steering rack where the steering column goes in that's connected to the steering wheel and back this side somewhere is where that 
track rod end that steering rod end bolts into now I can't see any way of getting to that and looking in various manuals they say you need to drop the subframe now this is another problem here as you can see marked in yellow that they're saying that these um, power, these are the power steering parts that go to the steering rack and they're saying that they're corroded well they've been like that for a couple of years you can see yellow paint on there um, my worry is, is these will have to come out and you just cannot buy these brand new at the moment I can't find anywhere to get them um, second hand ones tend to be a little bit corroded in this same area um, so what I'm going to do as the steering rods are only an advisory I'm going to leave those because it's now autumn time it's coming towards the end of September here in the UK the weather's going to turn rubbish and I do not want to unbolt this subframe um, this time of year and have it off over the winter and the car immobile so I'm going to leave that I'm going to clean this up here and put a little bit of paint on there um, so it doesn't look corroded anymore I don't think the MOT guys are allowed to scratch paint off there's nothing wrong with these pipes they're just corroding a little bit they're, not, they're just an advisory they're not actually anywhere near breaking through um, so I'm just going to clean those off, put a little bit of paint on them, maybe black paint or silver paint, I haven't decided yet, and um, hopefully that won't come up as an advisory, but as for the, as I say, the, the uh, steering rods, steering arms, they're going to have to wait until I've got the time to drop this chassis out, and as you can see, this chassis is very, very rusty, the subframe rather, um, and the wishbones, they're all very, very rusty, so they want a good clean powder coat. Um, so that is, I'm afraid, going to have to be a job for next springtime, I think. Um, so we'll crack on and get these pipes sorted out. Just there, get those cleaned up. Um, and then we'll move on probably to the brake calipers and then it'll be time to get the car in for an MOT. So let's crack on with that. Right, so I've rubbed that all down. Um, just use a green scotch pad there and put some um, hammer right satin black paint on it and it looks like that now so uh, obviously the paint's got to dry off so it should go a bit darker than that put a new cable tie around there because that clamp's corroded a little bit um, like I say I think I'm going to take all this subframe out in the spring um, it's looking really really tatty um, it needs a refurb um, we've got a bit of an oil leak here from the engine as you can see I think it's coming up coming from up there somewhere so it's probably the crankshaft or we'll see or um, the sump and I've just noticed as well up the front here somewhere I don't know if you can see it it's a bit dark up there but there's some uh, some oil dripping on there from somewhere so the whole thing wants a complete refurb it's uh what is it now 1999 20 it's 21 years old um, done 167,000 miles something like that and it did spend the first few years of its life um, down by the coast down by the sea with the salty air so um, yeah I think we need to do something about this but the aim of this year as it's getting towards the end of the uh, summer now it is the end of the summer it's autumn time um, I think we need to get it sorted so we can get it MOT'd get it on the road then I can get it round the lock up and we can bring it back and do bits and pieces too if we want to um, and we can also swap it over with the Astra and use the Astra during the winter um, did have a little chat with a guy I know yesterday um, who is interested in buying the Astra next spring because I think I'm going to sell it so um, yeah we'll bear that in mind and uh, see how we go with that anyway on with the next job well, I think that's a good place to leave it for today um, in the next video, we'll get on with sorting the brakes out on the Vectra GSI. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe down below. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.